Cindy Schwartz, uh, our colleague who's the executive director of the Maryland League of Conservation Voters, is apparently stuck in traffic. So uh, I get to introduce my own congressman, which is a really good thing. I want to do that with a story. I've been hanging around members of Congress now for more than 30 years. I, I started working for, for my first member of Congress in 1974. So I've been around congressmen for a long time. One of the things that I have learned in all those years is that congressmen only do things they care about. Because there's so much noise out there, there's so many people asking Congress people to do stuff that it's really hard to distinguish uh, among all the things that everybody's asking you for. And you really only do things you care about. That's the threshold. About two years ago, I moved from the District of Columbia out to Maryland. And I moved into Elijah Cummings' congressional district. I'd never met Elijah Cummings, didn't know anything about him. But I decided that I wanted to have a meeting with my congressman. And so I contacted the scheduler and I said, I'm Doug Siglin. I work for the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. I'm a, dis I'm a resident of the 7th District of Maryland. I'd like a meeting with a congressman. And they said, OK. So they scheduled me at 2 o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon or something. So I showed up at 5 minutes to 2 on a Tuesday afternoon. And I was in the outer office. I was waiting to talk to the congressman. And the congressional bells rang. And for those of you that know about the way the House of Representatives works, when there's a vote, there's a whole bell system, and the bells ring, and that tells the congressman he has to leave what he's doing, get over to the floor of the House of Representatives and vote. So while I'm waiting to talk to my congressman, the bells ring. And I thought, oh my god, lost the opportunity. The congressman comes out, shakes my hand, and says, i got to walk in one minute. What can I do for you? I thought, okay, showtime. I said, Congressman, I work for the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. I'm in your district. I care a lot about clean water. You're on a committee where you are senior enough that you really can do something for clean water in our region. I want you to step up and do something. He looked at me and he said, you know what I hate? I said, no, sir, I don't know what you hate. He said, I hate it when people look at me and they think that all I care about is poor black people. He said, I care a lot about poor black people and I care about their issues, but I care more than that. I care about more than that. I care about the environment and nobody ever asks me to do anything for the environment. He said, you come back. I gotta go vote now. You come back. And we'll figure it out. And that's why Elijah Cummings, that's part of the reason Elijah Cummings is the sponsor of the most important piece of legislation for the Chesapeake Bay watershed since the Clean Water Act of 1972. My congressman. Thank you, Doug. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Come on, we can do better than that. Good morning, everyone. It is certainly my honor and my privilege to be here this morning, and I want to thank you, Doug, for that very kind introduction. And um, I did not know when I told you that that you would give me the weight of the world <laughs> to carry on my shoulders. But I am indeed honored to be here, and I'm glad that all of you are here. And the reason why I'm so glad that all of you are here is because you are the folk who have some foresight. You are the ones who have the vision. But not only do you have the vision, but you're willing to synchronize your vision with your conduct. There are a lot of people who have visions, but many of them stand on the sideline 
and complain. I call them the Budweiser group. <laughs> They're the ones that gather at your house on Thanksgiving and Christmas. They stand around some beer and some wine and they complain over and over again about what's wrong with the world. You know them. But never lift a finger to make a difference, never make a phone call, never make a contribution, never attend a meeting, never write a letter, never send an email, never speak out beyond the group in the kitchen around the Budweiser. And so I've come here this morning first to thank you. I thank you because you fully understand that this is our watch, that you understand that we can not afford to wait any longer. And in the words of our president, you understand the urgency of now. You understand that if we continue to wait, not only will time pass us by, but as we already see, our problems will become far greater. I also thank you for not passing the buck on to the next generation, but saying that we will tackle this problem while we live. You know, as I get older, I, um, look back in my life and um, one of the things I did a few years ago when I turned 50 is I had a reunion with myself and sometimes you need to do that and I said God you have now allowed me to live longer than I will live and I want you to do me a favor. I said, God, allow me to be most effective and efficient in every single thing I do. And ladies and gentlemen, if I could encourage you to do anything, it is to make this effort the most effective and efficient effort that we can make it. I am tired as a congressman of hearing over and over again people have a lot of emotion, commotion, and motion, but no results. Come on, don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> motion, commotion, emotion, but no results. That may have been fine for some things, but if we have that in this effort, sadly, our region, our country, our children will suffer. So we got to have some results. And to that end, I have come here just to speak to you for a few moments, and then I'm going to go. But I understand that Craterville, Congressman Craterville spoke before you last night. I was very glad to hear that. I want you to understand that he's in a tight position. And let me say this, we've got to, if we want this to pass, we've got to help him. And I've sat down with him over and over again and said, look, man, what do you need for, for, for in order to help us with this bill? And uh, he's told me a few things, and so we're going to work with him for, for, for in order to help us with this bill.